Hi guys, this is Michael Merdad here. It's time for our Friday Night Spiritual Insights with Michael Merdad. Today we're going to talk about dealing with missed opportunities. And some people, you know, they want to jump in and say, oh, but there's no missed opportunities, it's all perfect, and blah, blah, blah. Let me explain all that. The point is we feel like we've had missed opportunities. So I'm asking you right now, Check in with yourself and ask yourself, do you have any? Do, I mean, any, now this is real close to what we call regrets, but I've done a talk on regret. So go and address that separately, okay? Go and deal with that separately. Um, wa watch the videos, you know, and kind of check that out on your own. Uh, the videos I've done on regret, but this is missed opportunities, slightly different. Similar overlap, but slightly different. So. Missed opportunities would be like those doorways you didn't step through. There was this person interested in a relationship. I said no because I was dating this other person. This other person attended, you know, turned out to be really a creep. And now that one that was really actually nice and healthy, they're gone. They found somebody else and so on. That's one of those we could think of as a missed opportunity. Um, we also have missed opportunities uh, related to soul's purpose or our work that we do. Or uh, maybe you've had, you know, I remember someone saying to me, I'm the agent for the number one spiritual selling author, you know, in the world. And I haven't, haven't had any need to sponsor any other authors. Um, I only needed one because we were so successful. This is the, like the top selling uh, spiritual uh, genre. You know, and they said, but I've, I've never seen anybody like you. They attended a conference I spoke at. And they said, I, I want to be your agent too. And I said, no, I'm not interested. Because I said, what would you do? Well, why would I want you as an agent? Well, I would get you on this show and I'd get the and top selling. Your books would sell millions. And I said, in all honesty, my books have a theme that the world doesn't usually embrace healthiness and Christ consciousness, for example. Um, that's not typical for this world. And so how would you get me on a talk show and why? Do you really think Good Morning America wants to talk about Christ consciousness? You know, and, and he kind of scratched his head and said, wow, you know, I mean, I hadn't thought of any of that. Nobody's ever really, everybody's asked me to be an agent for them and nobody's ever given me a reason to not be, you know, so I, I, I shot it down. And now I'm not saying that's one of my missed opportunities. It's, see, it's not a regret. It was an opportunity I chose not to walk through that door. But am I perceiving it as a missed opportunity? Maybe 10%. But it's not an example of a major heartfelt, oh my God, I missed that. I'm only pointing it out that it was an opportunity and I chose not to do it. So please start with separating Opportunities you chose not to pursue versus ones you accidentally or whatever did not do. So, and the reason I'm doing that is I want you to recognize some of them were actually right choices. Instead of missed opportunities, they were rightfully missed opportunities. Okay, so check that out first. That way you don't walk around, because you don't realize it, there are programs running in the back of your mind and they're deflating, deflating you and defeating you. People don't realize that these programs are running and they're gradually deflating them, kind of pulling them down. So I would love it, you know, to know that you could say, today I retired a few major drains that I didn't know were drains. I, I let go of a few major drains that I decided to own as the right choices. Uh, missed opportunities. Missed opportunity wouldn't be, again, similar to regret, but not the same. Like you might regret having had to do a divorce. It might have been the right thing to do, but you still might feel some regret about it. That's not a missed opportunity because that's not something that was coming into your life. It's something that was going or needed to go. So just know the differences. Missed opportunity. Did you have a chance to take a job you could have taken, didn't, and then you lost your other job, wished you had taken the other. That's a little bit more like a missed opportunity. Sometimes going all the way into regret, but sometimes just remaining missed opportunities. Um, 
Essentially, missed opportunities are umbrellaed under regrets because we obsess on them and we hurt on them. That's how they become regrets. But I'm asking you to take some and make them into, I chose to let this one go. I chose not to do this particular thing. I've had opportunities of all kinds, um, financial opportunities, people saying, let me give you some money to open a retreat, but they had agendas and they wanted to control what a retreat would be like. I have no regret whatsoever, but they were opportunities that could have been seen as missed, but I'm glad I did it, therefore they're not missed. They were chosen missed opportunities. I chose to let them be missed or let go of. I've had um, uh, opportunities in terms of business, intimacies, you know, people offering relations or things like that. And um, I think that um, in my life, I, I would say that there's a few instances where I was just doing, so, and still do, so much of the, you know, commitment to spirituality that um, that I chose not to step into opportunities that might have been more fun. Um, there's financial ones, as I said, but also fun ones, you know, intimacy fun or playful fun or friendship fun and things like that. Um, but I'm, I'm still okay that I chose to say no to those because I know me, I know my integrities, I know my dedications. If someone came along and said, I'd like to be your friend, and I say, well, you know, and I, a lot of you, it might be some of you that have said, hey, Michael, I would like to co-author a book. Man, I swear, guys, I do not mean any offense when I say, you know, no thanks. First of all, I don't have time. But if I did have time, I would finish a book I'm writing or write a new one. Um, you know, so I mean no offense when I, if it's ever been you that I've said no to on any topic, um, you know, because I'm just an oddball that way, you know, when, when you kind of know what you're about, there's just so little room or interest for settling or for compromising or even just for choosing some things that you know you can't really give your all. So, you know, I, I you know, sometimes I, I, uh, have thought things through and said, no, you know, I really appreciate, you know, this person says, could I co-author a book on sacred sexuality? Oh, well, I've already written books on that and um, no thanks, you know, and well, you seem like the only male that I know of that I would like to collaborate with. And the person, this is not one person, this is a few that have asked. So if it's including you, it may not be the one, you may not be the one I'm thinking of or speaking about. So, but I've had a few people ask. I've had people ask me to, to do, um, film kinds of things, various types of films. And, you know, and sometimes I've chosen no. When I was a kid, I had opportunities. Um, you know, there was a director once when I was a teenager who said um, he wanted to include me in a film. He, his daughter, uh, who's popular, was also in it. Um, and he wanted me to be in it, uh, playing her like love interest or something. Um, and that I would say is not a regret that I said no, because that was more just circumstantially. I mean, my family was going to say no anyway, and I was a kid. But also, even if it would have been an opportunity, oh my God, I was so shy to be to do like a an intimate, cute boyfriend girlfriend relationship you know that would have been just on film that would have just been for me as a as an adolescent you know i was just painfully shy in that regard so that wouldn't have worked well but i would say that's kind of one of those curious see that's a difference that's not like i make it made a decision and i regret it or i made a decision to not do something and regret it that's more like one of those that was an opportunity and i didn't say yes so i can go that's curious that's kind of more like a missed opportunity it becomes a curious thing, like, hmm, I, I wonder what that would have been like. Certain relations that were uh, set before me, somebody was interested and I said, no thanks, you know. Um, those, there's very, very few that I thought, well, that would be curious to have done that differently. Um, but try to pare down the number of missed opportunities by recognizing that some of them 
you made the right decision and so no no regrets allowed you just make it empowering like missed opportunity or not I'm really glad I did this the way I did it um, so what do you think happens to the missed opportunities well generally they become leaks and they sometimes they blow up into regrets but they sometimes become leaks and leaks involve drains you know like almost depressions you might end up with feelings of like oh god if i only had done that my life would be different and oh but i chose this instead that's that's very painful man that's really hard on your emotional body so you have to be really mindful about those kinds of things um some of our uh, missed opportunities are you came into this lifetime with certain ideas and plans and spirit your guides your you know angels they were like come on man this time you can do it you are meant to be a star athlete so go and own it this time and you're like okay and you get here and you're like oh what's that you know and get distracted you know I'm on my way and then all of a sudden oh look at that and you get distracted I think I'm gonna go backpack Europe instead of uh, you know do my uh, commitment to my athletics or whatever maybe you were gonna be a prodigy pianist and got distracted and so on the other side you're like oh my god I can't believe that I missed that opportunity um, you know and sometimes it's a poem that came into your mind that you didn't write then someone else got it believe it or not sometimes you can have a song come to you and you didn't write it down and someone else picked it up you can have more than one person channeling a song at the same time and in a sense one just chose not to write it down or one might not have had all the ducks in a row to know how to um, get that published or find musicians to play it so there are things like that that go on but uh, all I'm leading to in this case is sometimes you have past life agreements you've made and they ended up missed opportunities sometimes there's childhood agreements you've made or plans you've made um, and you just didn't step through and do it. Sometimes you've had relationship opportunities, all of us, um, have had them that you just chose, just not gonna step through that door. You know, maybe you had a chance to get married, said no, and you didn't step through that door, and now you're not married, and you wonder what it would have been like. That's kind of a missed opportunity category. Don't let it go into regret too far, learn from it. There's a few things we need to do with missed opportunities, which I'll come back to. Um, we have, um, again, it's, it's almost like saying things I just didn't take advantage of. I had a scholarship and I didn't go. I was too uh, distracted. I was, I was getting into a relationship, so I chose not to do college. That might be a missed opportunity, unless you say, and I'm so glad I didn't. Yes, it was an opportunity, but it was a chosen to be missed opportunity. I chose to do so. That's empowering. That's that's pretty healthy. That's empowering. But see what categories you have. Are there any instances where you had an opportunity? Did you have an opportunity to have a child and you decided not to? Um, is that okay? Are you okay with that? You know, breathe into that. Feel into that to make sure it does feel clear. You definitely don't want it to become um, regret. And then there's um, soul's purpose. You know, you were meant to, this, like your ultimate purpose on the planet might have been X, Y, and Z, and you might have chosen A, B, and C. You might have, uh, well, there's a, great, there's a great scene, Filled of Dreams, the movie. Um, you might remember the base, uh, uh, you know, baseball, God forbid the theme. I mean, you, you may not be into baseball, and I'm not. So as soon as you say it's a baseball-oriented movie, but it's not, that's just a subplot. Um, but Field of Dreams, the baseball movie, um, there's a scene where Kevin Cosner's basically hearing these voices telling him to build something. And if he builds it, they will come. Well, build what and who will come? He's gradually putting the pieces together. He owns this Iowa farm, and then he thinks, okay, i got to build a baseball diamond. He builds it and these ghosts start showing up that are old baseball stars from the past and they're playing and they're like, thank you, you know, we get to play baseball because you, so was that the whole point? If you build it, they will come. Well, 
It was, but it wasn't. He also had a broken relationship with his father who loved baseball and passed away. So he gets to end up meeting his dad again at the baseball diamond. So that's the, the deeper, wonderful piece to it. But there's a scene where he's trying to figure out who's, who's to come. So pieces, synchronicities are coming together and he realizes, okay, there's an old ball player that was going to become a potentially become a baseball player. Might have been in the stars for the guy. And he was a young kid. And so he goes and back in time, some strange circumstance, he goes back in time and finds this kid and realizes, you know, he, well, he goes back in time and finds the guy that would have been a baseball player, but he finds that he had grown old now. This is like, say, 20, 30, 40 years after he would have been a baseball player. He finds him later in his life, and he's older. Um, he manifests as a kid later on, but I'll keep to the simple part of the story. So he meets the old guy and says, so you wanted to play baseball, right? Yes, I did. I know a place that's magical, and everybody that ever wanted to play baseball comes and gets to play, if it was their dream. And he says, so you're saying to me that if I go with you, I'll be able to go back and fulfill my dream. Yes. And he says, I'm going to have to pass. Why would you pass? He says, because I became a doctor and I saved lives and changed lives. So as much as I would love to do it, it's a missed opportunity that I'm going to choose to miss. And that was empowering. See, that was beautiful. And um, that's what the old guy says. Still, he manifests as a kid, shows up, comes out to the baseball diamond. He's going to get to play for the first time. And this is kind of cool if you think about it. And this child who's watching the game, Cosner's kid, starts choking on some food and was dying. The kid, who became a doctor later in life, sees it from the ball field where he gets to finally play and make a decision again. Stay on the field and play. And he looks down at the line. He realizes if I walk off this baseball field, I'll, that'll be it. And he walks off. Everybody sees him transform into an older man, Burt Lancaster. And he walks over, takes care of the kid, takes the food out of the mouth, saves the kid's life. And then Cosner says, oh my God, this was your chance again. You could have. And he says, don't think twice about it. This, you know, this is the right thing. So then he walks off into the, you know, field and disappears. Um, so that's what it's like. I didn't know I'd mentioned, I didn't know I would mention this movie as I was talking about this for the first few minutes of this, but it really fits well. Um, that's a righteously chosen moment, you know, uh, the movie 17 again, where, um, the, the guy goes back in time and he realizes, I, I don't like the way my life turned out. So he goes back in time and has a chance to see if he wants to keep it that way or do it over. And he, he too said, no, I'm going to choose this opportunity uh, to miss this opportunity because I'm going to re-love my wife and kids differently than being kind of a whining guy who took them for granted. So those are examples of, of choosing that. There are movies where somebody made choices and did things differently. Um, you know, I, of course, George Bailey from It's a Wonderful Life also said, you know what? Fine, if I missed opportunities, so be it, because I'm actually, I can see where I'm happiest with the decision that I did make. But there are movies and stories and personal stories like your own where you say, but there are some that missed opportunity, not regretful decisions, like, oh, I regret I got in the car with that person, you know, and, and they took advantage of me. That's regret. I'm talking about what you didn't do mostly, what you didn't do that you would like to have done. So take an inventory of that. Retire some of those, though. You know, what door did I not step through? What opportunity did I not take? And then, you know, obviously, I'm going to end up asking you, then why don't you take it now? You could still do some of those. I should have written that book. Then write the damn book now. I should have written a song. Write a song now. Get it out of your system so you have something less to complain about. You know, I just, I'm not into it. Then let it go and call it done. As soon as you call it complete, it's another leak that you've concluded and it won't drain you anymore. But like maybe you're going to um, maybe you're going to write it down on a piece of paper, do a burning bowl ceremony, 
Clearly, the steps to dealing with this, you know, one, I'm going to have to talk about self-forgiveness. Forgive yourself for not stepping through that doorway. But was I supposed to? You didn't. Was it God's will? If it was God's will, you probably would have done it. Because if it's God's will, it's going to happen yesterday or today or tomorrow. So that means if you didn't, you're still going to do it someday. Here's one thing you don't want to forget, though. If you had an opportunity and you didn't step into it, they get recycled. That's really good news. If you can let it go, it gets recycled. If I have a can in my hand that gets, it's a recyclable can, and I don't put it in the can to get recycled, it doesn't get recycled if I'm clinging to it. So you've got to think to yourself, um, you know, am I going to, am I going to let this thing get recycled? Am I going to say, Forgiveness, of course, one option, important option. And secondly, um, I think I'm ready to let this go. Um, and when you do, I'm, I mean, it's, you know, it's like um, change what I can and accept what I cannot. So get out and change it. Forgiveness, one. Second, change what you can. Go and do the thing if you want to do it. If not, accept that you won't do it. Got that? Simple. But do something. And third, the one, you know, that I started mentioning in a moment ago, and that's, you know, just recycle. Just know I'm going to, when I let go of the things I can't change, when I accept them, that I can't change them, then step three is going to be, now it could get recycled. I regret that I didn't do such and such. Like, like for me, for instance, shyness as a kid led to me, um, it added to my always dressing kind of frumpy, simple t-shirts and baggy pants, you know, just relaxed things. Um, it's a missed opportunity in that I never dressed up. I never did much to kind of try to look nice. Um, there's a little bit of a missed opportunity, it feels like, for me there. I'm not saying I'm, I obsess on it. I'm saying that's one of those that could be seen as sort of a missed opportunity. Because I, I, just, I just chose not to do that. But there's times when, especially when you get older, where you go, maybe I could have done a little more of this and that. Another example would be, I really like music. I don't know how to play music. I can sing a little bit. You know, I can hear the notes and match them. I could sing really high, really low. I can, I can sing a lot of range, but not professionally. But I can just do something. So a missed opportunity might be that I never pursued music. Um, and again, part of the shyness in school would have been when friends were in bands, um, they would ask me, you know, dude, you know, you, you got to do... No, there was no way. So that would be one of those potentially missed opportunities. Now that one I can retire because if I feel like I had to choose that world, that rock world... And I mean, I have friends that made it very big. But if I have to choose between that rock world and what I do now, I mean, come on. I mean, there's not even a, an ounce of a, of, of, you know, a doubt, not a second of a, yeah, gee, I, I should have done that instead. I mean, this is who I am and it's what I do and that's it. So I can accept that one as one that I consciously, righteously chose um, to say no to. But it's still been there in those days as a kid. There was that thought, oh, maybe I should, maybe I could. So think back. Is it somebody you dated? Is it a soul's purpose question? Is it a fate that you felt you came in to do and didn't do? Oh my God, if you have a soul's purpose kind of level feeling of something you could have done, should have done, and didn't do, that can kind of drain you quite a bit and kind of haunt you. But still, forgive yourself. Change what you can and accept what you can't. And the things you accepted that you can't change, let go and recycle. Those are the three things I'm trying to get across. Just let go and recycle it. Um, you know, it's um, especially do not let yourself be like hell-bent on obsessing or judging yourself for it. It's not going to do you any good. And then it becomes regret. You don't want to go into regret. So you might be very pleasantly surprised to see that if you wrote a list and found, say, even just three things, missed opportunities, think about this. 
if one's romantic, if one's financial, if one's occupational, and so on, if just one of each of those got turned around into something you recycled and it came around again, wouldn't that be cool? If you can even resuscitate one of these things that you thought were gone and dead, dead and gone, um, oh my God, I think you would find this to be quite miraculous. You'd be like, oh, Michael, guess what? You know, um, my whole life, you know, I, I wanted to do this and I was able to go back and do it. And even if it's not to the same degree, I wanted to sing, but now I get to sing at an open mic thing, but it's not uh, concert halls. Okay, but at least you get to do it. Maybe that will help you feel still complete somehow. Um, but there are soul's purpose opportunities, real major soul's purpose level things that we go, I, I had a chance to do this and I just didn't do it. Um, I have this thing that I've taught forever that God has this unique way of taking things you regret, opportunities you missed, doors you didn't walk through, and so on and so on. Things that you think are flaws of yours, things, you know, oh, you know, terrible circumstances. I've been abused and uh, I used my body and I'm an addict and all these things. You take all these things, pros and cons, things you think you like about yourself, things you think you don't like. And spirit has this profoundly unique way of taking all the pieces to that and weaving them into a new tapestry, the new you, your new life. I mean, it's so extraordinary. I've seen it happen so many times. So somebody who says, well, come on, but I've been promiscuous and a drug addict. I mean, how's that going to be part of a soul's purpose? I don't know. Maybe as a sponsor, you know, uh, in a 12-step group of some kind. Maybe as a, uh, uh, a youth counselor to kind of help them through. Maybe it'll be acted out as a parent who's guiding their children to make different decisions than they made. It, it, it'll come around. I mean, it's hard to put this into words, this part, guys, because it's surreal and it is not the common everyday things we see in this world. But Spirit has a unique way of turning these things around. Um, I, and I call it recycling, kind of tongue-in-cheek, but that's kind of what it's like. Um, so anyway, take that inventory. What, what doors did I not walk through? And can I still walk through? Except if I can't. And it'll get recycled. The things, if, if I say make a list of 10 things, and you decide immediately five of them are, five of them are things where I, I made the right decision. Gone. Good job. Your list of 10 is now five. And then there's a couple that were regrets, and I'm going to start doing some forgiveness on those regrets. Nice job. So your list of 10 things that you thought, oh my God, uh, um, things I uh, missed opportunities, 10 of them, oh my God. Now it's down to three. This is called divide and conquer. Down to three, okay? Then of those three, there's two I can change, at least try out. And one I can't, which I'll accept. So now what's gonna happen is, the two I'm thinking there might still be a chance, I'm gonna go get put them to the desk. The one I'm not going to be able to change, I'm going to accept. And all of a sudden, it goes out into the ethers, gets recycled, and it'll come back tomorrow as another opportunity for me. Who knows what form. And the two, going back a step, the two that I said I could change, what's going to happen with those? I'm going to put them to the test. Maybe one's going to end up over in the recycle category. Maybe both of them will end up in the doables. Either way, they're going to you know, come back as amazing things. Um, things you maybe could not have dreamt would have come your way. If I were you, my last bit of advice is I'm going to start wrapping up here. If I were you, I would try to remember to keep my mind very open, like sky's the limit. Very open. Instead of going, well, I, I hope I can eke out of the universe some little favor like to replace this big thing I wanted and at least give me 10% of something nice. It's the other way around. You're giving up something that you thought was 100% of a great thing that's really only a 10% of a decent thing and it can become 100% of a great thing. That's the way it flips around. So keep that in mind. 
missed opportunities. Well, I had a chance I could have had children, but now, you know, Michael, you're saying, go ahead and put it to the test. I'm, I'm past the right age for having children. No, but you can, you can nurture others. You can donate time at a daycare. You could still uh, adopt. I mean, whatever, you see. So don't use your head because it'll usually be controlled by your ego that will hijack your thinking and tell you there's no way of making any good out of anything. Instead, you choose to figure out, you and God, you know, collaborating on how to make something wonderful happen in your life, whatever the case may be. Um, I thought I was going to, you know, do this or that. Now I'm doing something and it's, it's better, it's different. Something that I thought, why did I even bother learning whatever, let's say a, a, a trade? It'll come back and be part of your work later, believe it or not. It's the weirdest thing. Um, things you learned, it could be your favorite hobby as a five-year-old was your Susie, you know, Easy Bake Oven or Betty Crocker or whatever, you know, one of those kinds of things. Um, your Easy Bake Oven and you, you might have loved it. And you go, yeah, but I missed an opportunity. I wanted to go and become a baker and a, 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 you know, a person who did cakes and wonderful things and I didn't. I went and became a banker. Um, and so now what do I do? Well, you might find that your skills as, as the banker, you leave the banking perhaps, but maybe there you learned how to uh, fill out business applications, uh, business loans. And maybe it'll, it'll come back and that thing you didn't like doing will support you later to go back and fulfill your dream. You don't know and you don't know until you try. And when you try, you don't fail. You try if it doesn't work and you say, okay, and you let it go, accepting what you can't change, and it'll still come around as something beautiful. I could go into examples of it, but I've shared those over the years now and again, and I don't want to be redundant. Um, I'm just saying that it's happened for me many times. So think about it, guys, think about it. Missed opportunities. Um, I'm not saying this to put you in a depression because it's not the same as regret. I'm saying missed opportunities, kind of like intriguing, kind of exciting, like, hmm, doorways I didn't walk through. Oh, you know, I wish I had done such and such. You know, there was a spiritual teacher that uh, I knew fairly well and I was gonna go see him one more time and some things got in the way. Um, and I had chose to walk away instead of seeing him again. And then he died like a year later and I never saw him again. I don't have regret, but it was a missed opportunity that I'm saying I'm okay with that one. And I wouldn't be able to give you lots of examples of ones I missed and thought missed because I usually wrap my mind around it and felt that was the better way to go. If there were missed opportunities for me, boy, um, I, ch I chose and still would choose them again. That's how you'll know you made the right decision if you would still choose today to say no to that thing. Then be at peace, be really, not just at peace, be really proud of yourself so that you get fuel from that and go, God, that's great that I said no to something and I still would. That really proves that, yeah, I mean, I still have the same clarity and integrity. That also pats myself on the back in the past for having the integrity to say no then too. Turn it into a positive. Um, for me, you know, um, there's a couple of times <clears throat> where on sacred sites tours, um, treasures could have been found. Uh, one was a really trippy experience where a billion synchronicities all fell into place. This is, um, I don't know if I want to tell you where, it was in Salem. And I uh, took a group of people through there and all these bizarre things started happening and I started going, okay, kind of channeling um, a map. I didn't imagine treasure in Salem anyway, so it wouldn't care, you know, wouldn't think to look, but, but I had this like channeling and that there was this treasure we could find. So I thought, okay, let's go, let's go find it. So I thought, well, what I'm gonna do is, um, we're gonna go, um, you'll have to excuse the, the loud, uh, the gardeners are outside, they come around once a month and clean things up, so I apologize. In any case, um, 
we went to Salem and I was looking around saying, is there a map? Does anybody have a map? So we had to try to find a map of the area. We finally found a map. And I'm saying to people, okay, I don't see on this uh, rivers, streams and rivers. No, there really aren't that many here because they filled them in, landfills to create for housing and buildings and all that. So the channeling was wrong because I, I saw a river, stream or something. Um, and then we found a map and I go, okay, let me look. There is, there is a river, a map, you know, I mean, a, a river or stream. And I'm like, see, okay, great. And I go, there. So we took a car ride and went looking to see if we could find it. Coincidentally, the stream happened to go along a road, so it was easy to find. So we park and I ran out and went on this dilapidated kind of bridge, an old, old, old bridge uh, that you're not supposed to go across because it's quartered off or whatever. Um, so I climbed the barrier and went on top of this bridge and was looking like something here, something. Here. And I looked down in the water and I swear, looking up to me, this perfect face of a skull. Now, whether it was a plaster skull, cement skull, a real skull, it was probably normal head size and it was in the water. The water might have been six or eight feet and I swear, buried in the sand, but just this much. I swear it was the weirdest, it's funniest thing. And it was like, wow. So I knew X marks the, the spot. Um, missed opportunities. I partly, that one I partly chose and partly, I mean, practicality. Uh, if I would have gone digging there, somebody would have possibly seen me and it might have been even illegal to do such a thing. So it's a missed opportunity, but one that I have to say halfway I chose not to bother with it. And there's other times because yeah, I go to sacred sites in other countries and we find these things and you're not supposed to find things, you know, even in the Southwest. You find uh, Anasazi, uh, ancient Anasazi, thousand years old and whatnot, arrowheads. You're supposed to not take them because the government wants everything. Um, and sometimes there's righteousness to that and sometimes there's control to that. So things like that. Um, I don't have any missed opportunities um, related to not going to any country or sacred site. Went to all the ones I want to see. Um, so that's about it. I, I would say to you folks... For me, I've transformed them really typically into something else uh, with only a couple of regrets. Maybe one related to film, um, maybe one related, a couple related to potential friendships or intimacies um, and things like that that might have been nice just to be w w close to somebody or a friend with somebody, you know. That's just naming the, you know, the human stuff, you know, some of those opportunities that, that came along. Um, um, an opportunity to have written a book. No, not really. If I wanted it, if it came to me, I wrote it. Um, opportunity to have children. I had them and it was fine. Um, I, I was, you know, blessed. I enjoyed raising kids. Um, so when it comes to categories, if you're not sure, just think in terms of, do you have any health doors you could have walked through? where somebody could have taken care of a health issue of yours and you didn't choose to do it. Health, finances, are there any, you know, for you? Oh, uh, for me, it's only ones that I'm, I made the right choice to say no to some things. Um, there's a financial one or two where, um, like one person, there was an opportunity and, um, they wanted me to get in on something and um, it was the right thing for me to say no, but it blew open into a very wealthy endeavor. I, it was right that I said no, but that was, that's almost what I would call a missed opportunity because I knew it was going to blow open, which is why I told them to pursue it. Um, but I didn't for reasons I can't e explain right now, but um, but it did blow open into great wealth for the person. Um, health, finances, or do you have any relationship opportunities you missed? Or do you have any um, family opportunities you missed? You know, health, finances, relationships, any work, occupational that you missed? Those are the usual categories, four or five categories. Go through them, check it out. Turn them into no regrets. 
through forgiveness. And the other way to heal regret is to learn. Did I, what can I learn from this? If you learn from it, now it, it dissipates some of the regret energy. Um, and then, like I said, go through those other steps, forgiveness and so on, okay? Um, turn them around, guys. Turn them around. Don't let things defeat you in this world. Turn them around, all right? I pray that makes good sense and that, you know, this could take you to other places in your life. When you recycle this, that third step of those three I said earlier, when you recycle it, you change what you can, accept what you can't, that's step two. Recycle step three and, oh my God, you know, it's so amazing that things come and you go, oh my God, there it is. Now, sometimes you won't recognize it, so it doesn't matter. You let it go unconditionally because it'll come back. Sometimes you won't recognize it. But sometimes it becomes very evident that this is one of those where something came full circle and I'm going to step through it this time. And when you do, three or more out of five times, you're going to be very pleased. But still one or two out of those five, you're going to say, oh, it was better off the other way. Because sometimes your soul wants to or feels like it needs to still complete it. It still needs to bring it full circle. Even though your soul is saying, we're probably better off without. Sometimes the human self is saying, I, I'm just not happy until I know for sure. So you go through it again, then you go, okay, got it. You know, so the human self resists a little bit, but your soul knows better, okay? So peace to you and peace to all your endeavors and peace to all your opportunities and seemingly missed opportunities. All will be fine. If it was that meant to be and it God and God's will and you surrender to God's will, it'll come around again. All right? Trust in that. And if it's not coming around again, then you say to yourself, then why should I care? That way you're not allowing any room for the ego to get its jaws of life in there and wedge everything open to, you know, into painful stuff. Just close the door and it be at peace. All right? Thank you. Blessings to you. Stay empowered. Stay clear. And don't let ego stuff get the best of you. Try to turn everything into a, a positive direction, like a, a reframe everything to a positive perspective because the ego knows not what to do with people that do that. It can't seem to get control of their hearts and souls. All right? Blessings. We'll see you. Bye-bye.